Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Random Game on Shrinking. And if you're new to this channel, one of the things I like to do is open up older games, usually PC games, see what's inside, play the game, and free them from the seals, because uh, games that are sealed can't be played, so our job here is to open up games and actually play them. So if that sort of thing sounds interesting to you, and you're not already subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe and click the notification icon so you can be notified when there's a new video like this, which is usually pretty often. The game I have here today is called Privateer 2 The Darkening. It's by Origin Systems. It was released in, I think, 1997. And this is a deluxe edition. And it says on the back, there's a little sticker that says, The deluxe edition comes with a limited edition poster and an embroidered squadron patch, and it's native to Windows 95. That sounds pretty cool. Um, and this is like a full motion video game mixed with uh, space combat and, and training, I believe. Um, so, first of all, let's look at it. So... This is a really cool box with a flap with a Velcro on it that opens up. And then inside the flap, it tells you it's a space combat training experience. So I think it's like similar to games like Starflight and Star Control and, and Elite and stuff like that, um, where you, do not, you don't just fly around and like, you know, kill people, but you also have to, uh, you know, sort of trade and, and do business and stuff like that. And there's a picture here of John Hurt. Uh, if you can see that, it's hard to put that in position. A picture of John Hurt, um, who's one of the full motion video actors in the game. Origin was was notable for getting towards the end, especially these these great actors to, be, to star in their in their games. It's like Clive Owen, David Warner. It's on the bottom. There's some other you know, names here in the credits, and uh, basically it says there's no rules. It's an open world sim, essentially. You know, honestly, these are not my favorite types of games. I like I don't like sort of being a businessman in a game and flying around randomly. I like having a more set structure, but I haven't played this one and maybe it's really good. And regardless, you know, I wanted to pick it up because this deluxe edition I think is really cool. The box is really awesome. And, uh, you know, a squadron patch, like, you know, old days sounds like in terms of feelies. And this box is really heavy. I don't really actually know what's in here, but I'm imagining a big manual and a whole bunch of this because <laughs> it's pretty thick. Um, if you look at the way this is sealed... It's not shrink wrapped. It's sealed with this with this rectangular tape, and it's yellowed and it's peeled off here on the side. It's like you know, sort of come undone. And same thing on the bottom. Now I believe this is original seal, but I'm not sure. And in, in cases like this, especially, like it makes sense to open it because anybody could have just resealed this and you know taken the tape off, you know, like this, and put it back on, and it's like oh, it's sealed. You know, I just add a little bit of glue and it's, it's sealed again. I mean. There's almost no point in passing this off as, you know, as, as a sealed copy and trying to make money off it. I and mean, people will buy you it, I guess. But, like, realistically, as a buyer, you should not be paying extra for something that's sealed if you're not sure. So I want to make sure it's actually a new copy. Now, I was going to cut the tape over here, but it looks like I already opened it <laughs> just now just to demonstrate it to you. And that was, like, pretty easy. So like, let's just leave it like that. And let's actually open it up and see what we got. Okay, so this is interesting. There's a cardboard insert that's shrink-wrapped. And that's something which I really have not seen very often. I can't remember the last time I've seen that. So maybe the origin actually knew that the box was not sealed so well from the factory. And I mean, you can't shrink wrap a box like this because you won't be able to open the front. So what they may have done is they may have decided just to tape it and then to deter theft to actually shrink wrap the inside. And that's what I'm assuming happened here because this definitely feels like... Uh, like its original shrink, I mean, just for the feel of it, that would be my guess. But let's open it up and see what's actually inside, and then we will know, hopefully. Come on. All right, just to make this easier, I'm going to use my super big kahuna knife. <laughs> I think it'll make it easier. Now, if we see if you see blood shooting out of my fingers, please call an ambulance immediately. Whoops! Please call an ambulance immediately. May have to edit that a little bit. The camera jogged, so sorry about that. It's always what happens when I open these things. Like I hit the tripod because uh, it's hard to actually use the force to get it open. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Looks like it opens from the sides, but it's actually probably supposed to open from here. So, we have CDs, 
let's come back to that in a second. Here is the promised Iron On patch. It looks really cool. Churichan Pirate Clan Skill Rating Privateer. Definitely looks new. This is, this is probably the coolest thing in here. I love these patches. They're awesome. What else? We have... The thing I like about Origin games is they used to always put in the thing that says, this box contains. So if you're buying a used copy, if you can see what's supposed to be in there and you can see what's actually in there on the eBay listing, let's say, then you know pretty much what you have. And it doesn't mention the patch in this case because it's uh, you know that was only the deluxe edition. But it's a three CDs, installation guide. Uh, what's this? this is the installation guide. And there should be a pilot manual, your guide to the universe, reference card, registration cards. So let's see. Here's the registration card. Not too exciting. Looks like this is the reference card, which is more than just a card. Oh, it's the cool keyboard layout here. Oh, and a space sector map or something. That's pretty cool. You can see that. Here's the other side. And then we got, oh, a catalog. Let's leave that for a second. We have our guide to the universe that I mentioned here. Our guide to the universe. And then the left, oh, there's a poster. Wait a second, something's missing. Something is missing. Unless it's in the CD, maybe it's in here. Okay, the pilot manual. 32 pages, I don't see it, but maybe it's in the CD case. It's not jumped to conclusions yet. So we got this, Your Guide to the Universe. Oh, cool. This is awesome. This is like, uh, there's some story in here. Like, how to pilot the ships. I think this is supposed to be like an in-universe guide, like written from the perspective of someone who's actually in the game world. So that's, that's what I love to have, actually, because it, it immerses you in the game, it draws you in. This is awesome. And then we got this big poster, it looks like, or maybe not so big, it's hard to tell. Pretty big. Uh, I don't know if I can show you this in the frame here, but here's the top half. <laughs> here's the bottom half. If I open it up, uh, see if I can open it up sideways. Um, my table here is in the way of really opening this up all the way. But this is, yeah, here now you can see it sideways, I think. This is the poster. It looks pretty cool. Let's see the... Uh, this this here, so we got a nice double jewel case. Oh, and here's the manual. All right, so here's the it was not missing false alarm. Here's the 32 page pilot manual. This one actually is in color, and it fits in the jewel case, which is cool. How to play the game from a not in game world perspective, and then I have disc one, and it says deluxe edition on the discs, which is interesting too. So the discs are different as well. Remember, it's in Windows 95 native, so that sort of makes sense. And I hope I don't get trouble getting it working. I might be better off with the DOS version in terms of actually getting it working on the uh, on my on a current PC. But we'll see about that. And let's look quickly at the catalog. Time to play. Get a picture of Mark Mark Hamill. Is that Mark Hamill? I'm not sure even anymore. All right. Uh, let's see. Need for Speed 2, Nuclear Strike, Motor Racer, Sid Meier's Gettysburg. Ultima Online, which was really, really, really popular back in the day. Wind Commander Prophecy. I think that is Mark Hamill, right? The same picture. Uh, Jeans Combat Simulators, which uh, EA owned as well, and they were bundled with Origin in a lot of cases. Populous the Third Coming, Dungeon Keeper. So, you know, I think this was this was like sort of in the end of, of the Origins, really, in a long run, right before they got absorbed by the EA Collective. But still some good titles in there. And this looks like a really cool package. I love this patch. I love the in-game, uh, you know, in-universe manual. Let's try this thing out, and let's look see what it looks like. All right, so here we have Privateer 2 The Darkening. Now, this is a game which is not really very well suited for a short video like this because you saw how much material there was in the box to read. And you'll see here there's quite a lot of full motion video before you even get to the actual game. And I'm going to try to navigate through it as best as I can, but uh, I'm not going to, I can't watch all of it. This video will, <laughs> will be super long. You'll sort of see like just how much there is. I don't even know what's going on. First, let me tell you that. Um, 
the game doesn't stall um, so easily. Like it, I had to do, do like jump, jump through some hoops, basically to install the game. Um, but after you get that get it working, it does run fine under a modern PC in Windows 10. Um, all the videos by default are interlaced, but there's a fan patch that I have running that actually takes off the interlacing and uh, makes it run a little bit smoother. That patch also could put the game into windowed mode, and that's what I actually have running right now. Um, but it doesn't work very well, it's very buggy. I've been just using it so that I can, you know, port it more effectively. So I have this video with, like, some people are in a ship, and then, like, their, their people are attacking them from a planet or something. I don't know who these people are, I don't know what they're doing, I don't know what's going on. Just know that uh, they're being shot at, and uh, basically they crash land. They hit, they hit the boosters. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on here, but obviously not much of a game yet. And then, okay, this guy's dead, and the plane is like crashing or something. Into this big city. It reminds me a little bit of the Star Wars prequels, the way they, the way they have it set up here, but. Uh, you know, I don't. I doubt that this is uh, based on that. This this came a little before the Star Wars. The first uh, prequel came out in 1999, and this is a few years before that. But yeah, the ship is like crash landing, all this stuff going on. But like, so it's like they, they went definitely went for like high production values here. They tried to make it like a big budget movie, but like, I think people forget that you know movies are successful not because of explosions and stuff, but because there's a compelling story. And right now, I just have no idea what actually the story is. It's basically some ship with some guys in it, and the ship crashed because they were shot down. I mean, that's the summary of the video you just saw. Um, and now I think we get the credits, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so now it's basically the credits, I believe. Yeah, okay, so we have a bunch of famous people, in this, in this or semi-famous B actors, I guess, C actors. D actors, John Hurt. And by the way, this game was the sequel. If, if I didn't, I don't think I mentioned it before to uh, Wing Commander Privateer. And I don't know why they didn't call this game Wing Commander Privateer 2: The Darkening. I guess it was a little bit too long. But I feel like by throwing away the Wing Commander name, they're losing a lot of uh, goodwill and name brand value because that's a name that has a lot of uh, a lot of cachet. Uh, Christopher Walken. That's like uh, obviously a hardcore guy. All right. So now I have some more video and there's a whole sequence here that I don't really understand where it's like your character I think is in a hospital or something I'm assuming like he survived the crash or you know the crash the plane first of all there's a ship is like flying around through some, some, some tunnels or whatever and now this looks like a really fake you know 3d scene but some guys walking around in it. I mean, obviously the, the 3D and the you know the the blue screen techniques were not as good, as, as good then as they are now. Well, actually, I think I skipped that whole thing. There there was a scene where um you you you're, it shows your guy getting like busted out of the hospital and there's some fighting and some people get shot and basically I had no idea what was going on. But I pr it's probably good I skipped it because it's pretty pretty long to show you the whole thing. And so now I'm in this bar, and I can talk to Joe the bartender, as far as all that I can do, or I can exit. So if I talk to him, we get some, some more video, some crazy guy fighting in a bar. It looked very quiet when it wasn't showing the video, like I had an option to choose, but all of a sudden when I clicked on the button, all these crazy people showed up here. And I think this is John Hurt, the bartender. So then I'll tell you, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it's a whole long scene. I guess this is you. And this goes on for like five minutes. It's really quite long. And then eventually, if I click a button to skip it, or just escape, I guess, I get to a choice where he offered me something like a ship or something like that. And I have two choices. Sounds more than slightly illegal. I don't like. Actually, seriously, this wasn't working before. But before when I was doing this, like I was getting garbled speech when I tried to like hover over this. But now it's actually working. So whatever, I can say, "May I get a bargain?" Now, now it continues. So it's it's similar to Wing Commander three and four if you played that, where there's like these full motion video sequences, and then uh, you get to make choices that affect the story at some point. So that theoretically should affect the story. Um, but then there's more full motion video, and right, now that's over. Now I can't talk to him anymore, and all they can do really is leave. And so, 
This pad apparently is a big portion of the interface, even to travel to their destination. I'm in the inn right now. I can go to customs. If I can figure out how. I guess exit to travel. And now I'm in this customs area. There's a few things I can do. Exit to transit, enter booth, leave Hermes. But I can't really do all these things. If I try to exit to transit, actually this one lets me go back to the bar, I guess. Which is not really what I would do. I don't know why you pull up a, a data pad to go back to a bar. If I try to leave Hermes, it says you need to buy a ship first before you can take off. Which makes sense, I guess. But I don't really know what I'm doing. If, if you would have watched the video like fully, like I did before, it still doesn't explain what the hell's going on. Don't think because I skipped the video. <laughs> if I would have skipped it, you would have understood it. You probably have to read all the documentation that comes with the book. It comes with the game, rather. So, okay, so I hit ships here. Purchase and sell, or sell a ship. And it's all these ships. I have 13,500 credits, and almost all these ships are way too expensive. But if I scroll down the list... I can find like this one garbage one here, the Strafe. It's only 10,000. I can buy it. And uh, I can also buy some other stuff too, I guess. So this tells me like basically how bad the ship is. But if I scroll down, there's, there's really nothing else I could have purchased with the money that I have. So I'm assuming this is one of those games where you upgrade over time. And I can also purchase equipment. So um, I can buy, I have 3,500 left. I can't really buy much, but I can buy um, something. I could buy, uh, where is it? Uh, high X mines and proximity mines. I might as well buy that. Uh, how do I do it? To buy. And buy some proximity mines. Alright, so now my ship, I guess, is loaded with some mines at least. And now I can say done. And I can do other stuff here too. Look at bulletin board, news bulletins. I'm not going to do that. And then uh, I can actually leave. And now when I leave, I go into some kind of space flight sequence where it's like very difficult to control because I'm trying to control with the mouse. I'm assuming there's a much better way to do it, but I don't really know how to control it, honestly. And, I, and I, I'm not going to spend the time necessarily to read every single uh, piece of the manual to try to try to figure it out. Cause it took me a while just to get to this point. I mean, the graphics look okay, but I'm, I'm assuming this is one of those exploration games where you're supposed to, you know, go around and, and find something to do and trade and stuff like that. But honestly, like I said, to get into this game, I think requires a very large time investment up front, and it's not one that I'm going to make right this second. Um, I guess I have a target here. I can target something, but this, this basically, I'm going to crash to this, this planet, and I'll lose the game. They, they warn you away if you do that. So again, game too close, you'll burn up. So basically, you know... There's a lot here which I'm not able to show right now, but hopefully I'll do a video in the future where I'll actually play this game and try it out and see how this works and maybe do like the, the, the tutorial or something at the beginning and check it out. But uh, if you've played this game and you and you and you know more about it and you know like where this goes, please uh, you know let it, you know in the comments and, and drop by a line. Let me know if it's game, if it's good or not. I, I assume it is pretty good because Origin put out good games, but. I just am not able to put the time investment in right this second to figure it out. I was like pressing, pressing random keys. Guns, no lasers, missiles, no missiles. <laughs> Someone's shooting me right now. Uh, obviously without guns, I'm not going to survive very long in this world. So anyway, that's it for now. We'll try to revisit this at some point. But let me know if you like this game, if you have any thoughts on it, if, if I if I'm, you know, should get back to it soon. And there's a lot here to see. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys soon. Sure.